In this video, I'm going to explain one of the oldest classification algorithms out there, namely the perceptron. The perceptron falls in the class of discriminative models with linear decision boundaries, and it comes with a very elegant algorithm for optimization. Now, the setting is as follows. We are considering input data, which lies in some d-dimensional uh, vector space, and I have targets, um, which are binary. So I'm going to pick my target out of one of two classes and I'm actually going to encode this, encode this in the following way. I'm going to say my target either takes on the value minus one or one. Now then the perceptron algorithm relies on this uh, generalized linear model to make these predictions. Uh, so we first maybe expand my vectors in, in a basis and then apply this linear model to it. So that's the Ws, the model parameters that we're going to, to find, and then pull it through this activation function to map it to the values one or minus one. And this activation function looks like this. As a, as a function of A, it assigns the value one whenever A is bigger or uh, equal uh, to zero, and it assigns the value minus one when it's uh, smaller than zero. So it looks something like this, so we have the a axis over here, we have the value minus one, we have the value plus one, and my function looks like this. So on the negative axis, it assigns the value minus one, and then it jumps to one uh, on the positive axis. So this is what my activation function looks like. Okay, so it's a step function, and that means that my predictive model it takes as an input uh, a vector x, uh, maybe, uh, computes a new feature vector using the basis functions, then applies this linear model and then pulls it through this uh, activation function, which then uh, in turn gives the value plus one or minus one. And then I've made my uh, prediction. Now, because my activation function really focuses on the distinction between, well, a larger than zero or smaller than zero, that means that my classification essentially focuses on, uh, well, if I have a new data point X, I'm going to assign it to class one whenever this a scalar product uh, with my feature vector is bigger than zero, right? Then it belongs to class one because then this uh, uh, activation function evaluates uh, to one. And also the other way around, if my scalar product with my feature vector is smaller than zero, then I'm going to assign it to the negative class because then my function would evaluate uh, to minus one. Okay, and then we can come up with a very simple criterion that determines what, when my classifier is doing a good job or not. Uh, and it's given as follows. So uh, in the end, we want to find uh, the W, so the, uh, the model parameters W, such that for all data points, so all X and T and output pairs, this uh, scalar product with my uh, feature vector times T N is bigger or equal than zero. And you can see that this works, right? So um, suppose I consider the target uh, one. So that means that this thing uh, needs to take on a positive value, right? So if it's correct, then a W times my feature vector uh, takes on the positive value. So then I have positive times positive gives me some positive number. Okay, so that's correct. I have a correct classification. Now suppose my target would be minus one then I want uh, the scalar product to be uh, negative. So that would mean that, okay, this thing would be negative. My target is minus one, so negative tight negative gives me again a positive value. Okay, so this criterion clearly um, determines uh, a correct classification. And conversely, when I have a misclassification, then this uh, thing would evaluate to a negative value. So that's one something that we want to change then. So um, with this in mind, we can formulate the perceptron criterion. So an error that we want to minimize. Um, so when this is negative, we want to minimize this thing. Okay, so that's then given over here, right? So I'm going to sum over all my uh, negative uh, criterion, so over all my errors essentially for all data points which were uh, misclassified, right? Because if they were classified correctly, that's no reason to change, uh, to update uh, the Ws, uh, but we're only focusing now on the misclassified points. So this set M indicates all misclassified. 
uh, data points. Uh, maybe I could formally write it as the set of all indices n um, for which this um, criterion that I had actually evaluates to a negative value. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, when I have a data set, I'm going to evaluate uh, this. I'm going to select all points for which this evaluates to a negative value. So that means that all these points were misclassified given my model parameters W. And then this defines the perceptron criterion that I want to uh, minimize. Okay, so what does this look like? Um, so we consider the following situation where we have um, all these data points. So we have, uh, let's say, a blue class and a red class. And we have this decision boundary really determined by uh, W, which we want to optimize such that in the end, and these are the steps that I'm going through in the next uh, minutes, such that in the end, I end up with a decision boundary that nicely separates uh, the two data sets. So I'm going to indicate the blue class with T is minus one and the red class with T is plus one. Okay, and then we're interested in minimizing this uh, criterion, right? And this criterion can be formulated in terms of individual errors, right? Because we sum over all uh, the misclassified points, then we need to evaluate this error. So let me just uh, write this out. So this error is given by, for each data point, data point n, the error is given by minus w transpose, the feature vector tn. Okay, now let's identify uh, these misclassified data points. Um, so what we see over here, this is uh, my set of weights W that determines the decision boundary. So that determines this plane and it's parameterized by this uh, vector W. So that's really the normal of this uh, decision boundary, right? So this is my W and I have a red data point over here. So this is my phi uh, N of the, the end uh, data point. And to determine whether or not uh, this is a correct prediction, I take the inner product phi n with w and see if that sign coincides with my target. So I'm considering here tn, uh, so the red class, so that means t is positive. So I want this inner product to be positive, but we see that we're taking here the inner product of this vector with the w vector. So they have opposite directions. So this inner product will give me a, a negative uh, sign. So this really is a misclassified data point. So now we're going to do something about it. So we want to minimize. Uh, we want to update the W such that maybe next time this would be a correct uh, classified data point. Okay, so we can determine whenever a point is misclassified. So that gives me this uh, set M and that defines my perceptron criterion that I want to minimize. And we know from optimization theory that we can optimize uh, functions uh, via gradient descent. So we're going to change the, the model parameters W by taking a step along the negative gradient direction, really walking downhill this energy or error landscape. Now we can also see that this perceptron error really uh, breaks down into a sum of all these individual errors, right? So that means that this is a good candidate to also apply stochastic gradient descent. And we also covered that before. That means that instead of minimizing this entire thing at once. I'm going to do it step by step, evaluating, evaluating the error for one data point and then update it uh, using the gradient for that uh, particular data point. Uh, so let's do that and let's see what this thing uh, writes out to. So we have W at time step tau and I'm going to take a step in the negative gradient direction. Now what is the gradient of this thing with respect to W? Um, so we see a W over here. So the gradient is actually minus phi transpose Tn. Okay, so that's uh, the gradient that I'm going to insert here. So that's minus uh, phi N transpose Tn. And I took the transpose here because my uh, gradient or my uh, vector derivative gives me a row vector. Though in this convention now uh, my uh, weight parameters are vectors. Uh, so in this gradient descent algorithm, I actually have to, again, put a transpose over here. So um, I'm going to take this one away and that gives me the proper update rule. And of course we have minus minus, so I can also get rid of this minus and make this a plus. Okay, so this shows then the update step. It's really a stochastic gradient descent on my perceptron uh, uh, error.
and it tells me that my new weights are going to be obtained by taking my original weights and I'm just going to add uh, the data vector that I have. I'm going to add this data vector to the W that I have uh, with maybe some um, learning rates and some step size uh, eta and this will give me the new weights. And I just said I'm going to add it, but of course it depends on Tn, right? If, t, if my point belongs to the positive class, I'm going to add it. If it would belong to the negative class, then Tn would be minus one. Uh, I'm going to subtract it. Uh, but really this gives me a very simple update rules uh, rule, and it looks like this. So I have this uh, weight at time set tau. I have a misclassified data point. Um, and I'm going to now, because it was misclassified, my uh, update rule says I'm going to add this data point to my weight vector. So I'm going to add this red vector to the vector that I already have, to the weight that I already have, and that gives me my updated weight, tau plus one. Okay, that's visualized on this figure over here. So now I obtain a new W, so I also obtain a new decision boundary. So the decision boundary now is rotated. Um, still I'm making errors, so let's pick one of the other errors, let's say this data point, it's on the wrong side of the, the classification uh, boundary. And I'm going to again add this data point to uh, my weight vector w, because that was the update rule, right? So with this vector I'm going to add my data point, and that gives me this new w tau plus 2. And so we're now a couple of iterations uh, further, so this was uh, the weight at time step uh, tau plus 1 and this is the weight at time step tau plus 2. And the result is again given here on the right hand side. So now my decision boundary actually flips, uh, it changes signs. So now everything on this side belongs uh, to the positive class and this to the negative class. And now we're done really. In this particular example there are no misclassified points. So there's also no update rules to perform and we're done. And that is actually a really nice property of this Percepton algorithm that if my data is indeed linearly separable, then the Percepton uh, stochastic gradient descent will converge. So this very simple algorithm, it will converge in the end to a uh, decision boundary, uh, well, that, that, that perfectly separates the, di the data in these two uh, classes. Okay, so it's a very simple and ele elegant uh, algorithm. Uh, but of course, uh, it's... Because it's so simple, it is also limited in some ways, right? Uh, first of all, the Percepton uh, algorithm only works for two classes, and it doesn't generalize to, to multiple uh, classes. And then another thing is that uh, there may be many solutions, uh, so many Ws possible, and maybe some decision boundaries are more optimal than others in some sense. And this Percepton algorithm, uh, it will not give you the same decision boundary every time, right? Because it depends on your initialization, but it also depends on the order in which you pick uh, the misclassified data points. So every time I run this perceptive algorithm, I may end up with a different solution. And then maybe more importantly, um, if my data set is not linearly separable, then also this perceptive algorithm will not converge. So that means um, that it will keep keep on forever updating its, its model parameters w um, and there's no end to it. And this is a problem of course because often, actually almost always, we do not know in advance if my data is linearly separable. I mean if I would know this, if I would know this already then maybe I just... <laughs> so actually I inspected this already apparently and I know that it's linearly separable so let's just use that linear model that I uh, used in my inspection. Okay so generally we do not know if the data, if the algorithm will converge. So it's just wait and see, let's run it for a day. And if it hasn't finished by then, then stop it. But the nice thing is of course that this algorithm is super fast and, and easy to implement. Uh, maybe a final remark. Um, this actually applies to all methods discussed so far, far using basis functions. Um, it means we have to define these basis function, right? And especially in higher dimensional cases, it's really hard to come up with what kind of basis functions you should use, how many basis functions. Um, so this is actually a limitation that applies to, to other methods as well. And it is a limitation that we're going to solve in one of the upcoming videos, where we're actually going to learn, uh, make 
choosing the basis function part of the learning process. So we're actually going to learn what these basis functions are going to look like. And we're going to do this in the multi-layer perceptron uh, algorithm. So that's actually coming up um, in one of the uh, uh, upcoming videos. Okay, that wraps it up for um, the perceptron. The perceptron is this, uh, belongs to this class of discriminative methods. It has this very elegant algorithm uh, to it, uh, but there are some limitations to it.